So, so tell me more about this uh, Digimon module you kind of have. Oh, uh, it's not something that I made. It's something I, I uh, yeah, yeah. backed on Kickstarter. And it, from what I remember, because it's been a long time, it is a, it's called Animon. Uh, it's an indie RPG, completely its own system. Nice. Where you design your own chosen child and your own Digimon partner. Well, Anamon. <laughs> I see, I see. Shit, I always wanted to be a chosen child. It's like being adopted, oh, yeah. but with Digimon. I see here you got AnamonStory.com. Yep, that's it. Nice. nice. Oh, they're cute. <laughs> Oh yeah. Isekai before Isekai became like the the big thing, and like even then there were still other things copying it, like Monster Rancher when they had an anime. Dear God, Monster. Ever since I started playing D anD D, I've wanted to be in a Digimon game. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, I can agree. Uh, I mean, I'm big on Isekai myself. Mm-hmm. Like me too. Uh, I listen to a lot of lit RPG books, mm. <laughs> and they kind of hit that isekai vibe for me. I've read Overlord four times, <laughs> end to end, and Slime Tensei. Dude, I almost I'm almost done reading the solo leveling manhwa. <laughs> well, how's that going? Because like the anime it's, really takes off. Uh, it's amazing. Season two got uh, greenlit, I guess. Mm-hmm. I'm hyped for that. Hey, look here. We need a solo leveling campaign. Actually, that's the thing. Solo leveling is perfect for a campaign. It really is. Mm-hmm. Going into dungeons is literally like yeah, like it's literally a job. So it's like okay, cool. Uh, we're going into this dungeon, and then like uh, some people that are also just as powerful as us, as us are decide that they're going to murk mm-hmm. us. Uh, oh fuck! Now we- See, the the only issue with that is you would have to create a situation where they're able to become stronger like you know something yeah like you need to alter the lore because yeah. he's the only one who can get stronger yeah i, I mean it, it's your own Unless setting at this him. point like i don't want to spoil too much i mean but... uh gate uh that that anime where like <laughs> you know they had the earth defense force and the military's going into the gates yeah. and they're like whoa it's a there's dragons and elves and goth lollies okay shoot them Shoot him! <laughs> that was gay. Yeah, that was just away. shoot him. Yeah, I know. Like they should have gone more into the military aspects instead of like, oh hey, we're going to follow this protagonist who's a total weeb. See, dude. Okay, so I've been kind of I watched uh, uh, Kaiju Kaiju number, number eight, eight, and like that is a really good way. I feel like total leveling could. Uh, like make their hunters stronger, right? Create like the battle suits using like monsters. Yeah. I and mean, they kind of do with like the weapons and stuff. And it's essentially it's that. Items and, like, yeah, yeah. That's, that's really the only way that they do get stronger. And I guess you could have that be, yeah. you know. The fifth power once you uh, get going is kind of weird to me. But yeah, like, especially if, like, how do you determine what rank, you know, your party is? Or like what rank an individual is? But it's not the worst thing ever. I mean, if you think about the it, role uh, your individual combat skills can be like you could be a powerful person, but still a fucking mm-hmm. moron. Dude, yeah, you could have like a party mm-hmm. of like E and D rank fighters, and then someone rolled to be like an A rank healer. <laughs> like <laughs> that well, would be interesting. Mm. Yeah, to me, it's like the Master Roshi and Frieza. Frieza has no technique, but he's raw power. He was born better. True. Roshi uses intelligence Those technique. Are. Yeah, and that's exactly how that would go. I, if I was to run this kind of campaign, I would do away with the okay, you're just born out. You're just like outright, like whatever you are, you are your own level cap because that that's trash. There's no character growth there. So, I mean, well, what what's, yeah, what are they saying for the setting? You're like okay, uh, 
So only one guy gets a character arc. Yeah. This is like all you awaken as an E class. You're you're trash. Like <laughs> pack it pack it in. Have good fun fucking, at the office. Fucking luck, bro. I'm well, to the <laughs> ranking system per se, because like with traditional D and D, you have a kind of uh, four tiers of gameplay: tier one, tier two, three, and four. Uh-huh. And like uh, tier one is like okay, level one to five. That's a you know a tier one adventure. Then you get into like a tier two. Okay, that's a, a five to ten. That's a little bit more difficult. You're facing different kinds of things that really make the game. And like as a DM, running different tiers of gameplay are fundamentally very different. All right. Mm-hmm. And like systematically for like a like a solo leveling setting, if you're a party of E and D rank hunters, you wouldn't be going into the higher rank gates you wouldn't be having that higher challenge like yeah it would just be the same legally, mm. like <laughs> well, i could see you subdividing it into uh like say uh bits of like three so it's like yeah. uh, you go yeah. a a b c d e and then like uh, the last two levels are like s class well that's kind of how it works yeah yeah, yeah. that is how so i i didn't read a lot of solo leveling because i didn't love it but maybe because I couldn't remember anyone's name. <laughs> well, Korean names tend to be like, uh, you know, they blend. Like, dude, uh, maybe it's just uh, my American uh, mm-hmm. ness, but it's just like uh, when you're like Sun Ji Woo <laughs> and just like uh, you know, uh, Jin Woo is just like uh, Ho Win, and it's just like, dude, this, the these names like they kind of amalgamate together in my mind. And I've read a lot of ma- manhwa through uh, don't, webtoon. Don't get me wrong, like, but just like so, 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 there's like <laughs> subtle differences between names, and like yeah. sometimes it it's confusing. Maybe I'm just an idiot. Well, <laughs> I think it may be sort of like the culture exposure bias, like just to mm. not to keep looping back to Digimon, but there's Gokumon and Gokumon, and I can tell the Digimon. difference between the two. Yeah, it's just like... Maybe maybe now that we're seven minutes in, we should run the end. <laughs> I don't hear but, it. You don't? But it's not solo leveling if you have a... Ah, uh, come on. Listen, I'll edit that shit in after the show. We, we really should have oh. checked that. Okay. You can play it before I... <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> did, did I screw something up? Welcome to Dungeons and Talk Shows, oh, the dude. talk show that brings you monsters, news, and home... Oh, home. What the fuck? My audio was low the entire time, and no one told me. It sounded fine. It sounded fine for me. Does it sound okay now? Yes, yeah. sounds the same. Uh, it's probably because it Lipson does the, the uh, auto gain. So, like, my stuff was low for no good reason. Well, welcome to Dungeons and Talk Shows. The only talk wait, wait, show wait, tell you me if you hear this. Find things we do. No, no, you don't hear that? Okay. Nope. Well, we can't troubleshoot everything that. No. After a month, we uh, haven't figured out our profit. <laughs> yeah, we took a month off, you know, and we stumbled and fell right out of the gate. Ain't Life shit. really takes you. All right. Well, I am your host, Orion, and with me as always is my co-host. I am Sam. Happy to be back. Sorry for the break. <laughs> Life really uh, gets in the way. <laughs> Well, yeah, we see that you're in a, a new room. You're all fully moved yeah. in. It looks nice and whatnot. Thank you, thank you. And uh, with us today, we have a guest and uh, someone we've been talking to for a while now. Uh, why don't you introduce yourself? Hello, everybody. My name is AJ, the DM extraordinaire over at twitch.tv. Well, you know what? It... It's catchy. Choose your role. Right. Oh yeah, um, is we I randomly just came out with a sign up sign out phrase, and the minute the camera cut, everyone seemed to like it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it, it's hard. It's getting always, a good catchphrase, you know. Yeah, it's always like. Carefully. Ah, that's good. That's good. Yeah. I like that. Choose your role. <laughs> like the amount of time I had to spend trying to channel the person who wanted to do that. Did not already have that in the AD 
Yeah, I'm surprised like we were able to get this name. That's my wife. <laughs> Just ignore me while I ignore her. Okay. <laughs> Just yeah, I was definitely surprised. Give me a was mm -hmm. For I mean, for our Star Wars show, uh, no one took Hollow Chronicles. Oh, oh no! I, mean, I, I was wrong. About... It's even worse. Worse than the wife calling. Oh no! Your Is mother. Your doctor? Uh, my daughter. Ah. Uh, you see, my IRS. Uh, no, my, my daughter has inherited this uh, psychotic uh, thing from my wife, where she will call spam people into oblivion. Oh Jesus! So I have no choice but to mute my my entire phone for the greater good. For the greater good, yeah. Mm. I don't think I've ever heard my ringtone. You know, Sam, recently, when it comes to phone calls, you have saved my ass a lot lately. Uh, Happy to hear you. <laughs> well, the, the thing is, like, when, when uh, people call and they want money from Orion, I, I answer the phone. Dungeons and talk shows. This is Sam. <laughs> and, nice. And they're like, oh, sorry for, sorry for bothering you. <laughs> oh, because we have the wrong number. Well, you damn right. You shouldn't be calling into a podcast. <laughs> Unless you're calling our voicemail. Unless they're calling the voicemail, which we now have. I am so happy about that. Oh, my God. What a transition. I'm so good at this podcasting thing. <laughs> but better than me, dude. <laughs> I still hesitate when I talk. Um, and, like, I can hear it when I re-listen to an episode. I'm like, Orion, please stop hesitating. But uh, is you going to put the number in the description? How do we want to do this? Uh, I think I'm going to leave it in the description and let people know at the end of the show. Mm -hmm. But for anyone who does want to call in, leave their nerd ideas, rants, or questions, mm -hmm. or, or really anything uh, you got uh, going on up in that nerdy mm -hmm. head of yours, it's 513-570-4443. That's right. Three fours and a three. Dang. Damn, that's mnemonic and shit. Nice. The only thing I would say, probably no eating, you know, while talking. Try to no, not have music in the background. <laughs> if you play it on the show, you don't want to get copyrighted. You know? yeah. um, try to keep it under like two or three minutes. <laughs> I think it actually has a two minute cap. Oh, nice. Nice. But yeah, we would love to hear from whoever. Absolutely. But speaking about hearing from people, AJ, why don't you tell us more about your show? Okay, so uh, you have it just now, so. hmm. My show is, it's, it is 5e. It is in a custom setting that I have made uh, from the ground up that I've been working on since 2018. And uh, if I had to summarize the show, it's a Mm. I love the minor details of everything. Mm. Uh, for example, one thing I hyper encourage is you is like the toolkits that most people ignore. Mm. No, those get used often. Dude, I love toolkits all the time. And that's actually something that me and my dad are like really into when it comes to D and D in general. Cause mm. like you, we feel that they're underutilized. It's just such, like, dude, yeah. if you if you got a character that's got carpenter's tools. Boom! You you have a way of looking like a like a door, for example, uh, or a window, and you're just like, I can say from personal experience, I used to work as a glazer, and I've done a lot of construction stuff in my life. So it's just like, I look at a door or a window, I'm like, dude, I could take it apart here, here, and here, and all I need is this one tiny tool to do it, and it's just like that kind of detail. It, it opens up the role play. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, it does hey, happen. Hey, I have this book that gives an actual list of everything that's in every tool and two features you get from having it. Like, Ooh. tools can make potions better because they, they're just a little bit better extending it. Right. All right. Uh, you should send that to me at the end of the show because that'd be very fun. Because I know that our, our players like to make mm -hmm. stuff and they have big so plans they, for that. So I really want to kind of reward them mm -hmm. for that. 
fucking nitro. Yeah, like my my character personally has a ton of tool proficiencies and yeah. is a crafter salesman. Like you have an obscene uh, amount of proficiencies and tools. So there's a class you might like then that I know about. Oh yeah. Ooh. Jeez. Oh yeah. Uh, it is called the Craftsman from Fire okay. Secrets. You are just proficient in every tool kit at once, no matter what, and you have an all-in-one kit. Oh wow, dude! It's the ultimate Leatherman. It's about it's its whole gimmick everything. is it does not get a lot of class features, but what it can do is it can modify weapons and armor for everybody. Ooh, okay. Ah, I like that because then you can just like if you multi-class that a little bit into. Uh, say artificer. like an artificer, boom! The supreme artificer. It honestly, it makes artificer irrelevant. Oh yeah. It makes it completely irrelevant. Damn. I still it like it. Its own magic items. Uh, I had armor that made me resistant to fire, and I could cause it to explode on a whim. <laughs> I feel like that's one of those things where the how overpowered it is depends on how much of an engineering degree you might have. <laughs> oh, yeah, that and in money. Like, this c class requires money to modify weapons. Mm. So if you're in a low-income kind of campaign, then you're not that busted. Mm. True. So really, it's just a matter of what the monetary flow for the party is. Yeah. And the DM yeah, can control that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a lot of risk. If the DM game. controls resource management, then you'll be fine with it. Because I, I did play him broken, 21 AC at level 4. Oof. Damn. He gave me plate... Dummy gave me plate armor. Yeah. You're also proficient with every single weapon and armor. You gave That's that a little much. I mean, like... They make <laughs> familiar or something. They get nothing... That's the thing. They get those proficiencies and nothing else. <laughs> they, they're they just proficient. Yes, the they're just good at things. Like they, they don't get... Oh, they don't get any like utility features or nothing. It's all in the equipment. No spells or anything like None that? None of it. They are 100% equipment based. Damn. So if, say, your DM takes your stuff. You're like well, Iron Man. Yeah, your character is kind of hooped without his stuff. Nice. Okay. I, I do like that because I love characters where I have to be resourceful. Like, mm -hmm. in one of the upcoming campaigns, like, uh, if I get a chance, I want to play a rogue that's purely just a utilitarian. Like, okay, I got to make the stuff that I need. Or, like, maybe a fighter. Mm -hmm. It's just like, you got to come up with your own creative ways to fight. Mm -hmm. Like an improvised fighter. Mm hmm. Yeah, absolutely, because it, it's I just one of those things where I've happen. traditionally always loved the utility and the creativeness that comes with a caster, but you can get a lot of uh, creativity out of just like, okay, what items do I have on me, and how can I Rube Goberg this into uh, some <laughs> kind of masterwork? How do I home alone this dungeon? Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, you know, Kevin McAllister I mean, was really the the, <laughs> the blueprint. Another Crazy. class you might like from the same book then is the investigator. They just get like little trinkets. That's the closest thing they get to spells. Interesting. Hmm. That is interesting. Oh yeah. That that book is a godsend. I love that book. Nice. I'm always a big fan of homebrew because like a lot of people just play their game straight and that, that's perfectly fine. But where would we be as a DD community without a little homebrew? Uh, doing the same five campaigns over and over and over again. Yeah, mm -hmm. can't have that shit. You can mix it all together into one thing. And the generic realms is where the, you know, the generic realm is the place to be. Can't wait to visit the generic realms a little bit later. <laughs> Dear God, uh, I'm actually working on a purposefully generic uh, campaign book. Oh yeah. So, awesome. uh, you know the starter kits like. I Spire Peak, Storm Echo Isle, etc. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I found them lacking, and my first thought was, well, I'm going to do that better for free. There you go. Aw, oh, shit. He caught Wizards of the Coast lacking. <laughs> and now he's going to show them up. Oh, yeah. So basically, <laughs> what I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to put online for free, it's going to have maps, characters, quests, the setting, everything you need. Mm. Nice. I, I d I'm not big into paying for this hobby. Neither am I. Uh, so I think it should just be yeah, free. Yeah, me either. Five e tools. God, God bless five e tools. 
Oh uh, yeah, five E tools is like the best thing because like there's some I I use it mostly because like I do have a bunch of books because uh I worked a good paying job one summer and mm-hmm. bought a bunch of books because there was a place nearby that sold a bunch of them. Makes sense. And it's just like okay, now that I got the books and I know roughly what they have, I go to five E tools and it's just like I now I know where to look for the things that I need. And then it's just faster. Uh, I, I definitely also had a good paying job for a summer uh, while I was in the middle of college. And what I would do is I would go invest in a homebrew Kickstarter once per paycheck. Mm, that's a really good idea. <laughs> well, like, so then years later, a bunch of books just show up at my door. I'm like, oh, yeah. Yeah, because Kickstarters take forever. It's brilliant. It's yeah. like a, you know, a present surprise for your future self. Set it, forget it. Oh, my. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I love it, it. it is the D&D equivalent of a crockpot dinner. That, Just, oh, put yeah, that on a I t-shirt. <laughs> but it's so, like, I mean, if I don't know if y'all have ever heard of Heliana's Guide to Monster Hunting. I don't think so. I have. I, I, I have. It's a thick boy. Hmm. Like, I would call just the book an inch and a half thick. Dude, that's mm. awesome. Yeah, that just shows up in my door. I'm like, oh, cool. This happened. <laughs> Dictionary. Well, yeah, it's got uh, monster fights. It's got a whole class. Nice. Uh, race of that, chicken people. Nice. <laughs> chicken they people. They can all polymorph into a chicken. Mm. That's what the world needs. It's also got pangolin people, and I love that. Oh, you, you got Sam's attention uh, no, there. No. <laughs> Sam, Sam, I'm going to let me pull it up while we talk, and I'm just going to send you an image of the cover art for them. Please do. I love them. <laughs> I love them already. I think uh, in one of our tall. early episodes, like we made like a pangolin girl as a uh, as the cover art for one of our episodes. I think we Spectacular. Did. I love pangolins. Such a nervous They're my bunch. favorite animal. It's not something you'd expect to be uh, your furry waifu. But... <laughs> <laughs> well, my favorite way I've ever seen them described is, here's an animal that's very nervous about asking you to prom. Look, I, that sounds I, about right. I have an OC character that I made, or got made, a few years ago that was a pangolin, like, anthropomorph size, you know? Mm-hmm. And I, I really liked it. That's awesome, dude. Because like it's just such a underutilized, under like a underappreciated animal. I think so, and they're you know they're in danger and they're hunted and they need they need to love man. Protect them, protect oh, the yeah. boys. The second I got them, I made them canon in my setting nice. in, in the country that is based off uh, Edo, Japan. Yeah. Oh, that's it's very that's elemental based. And so I immediately made a, just all from this book, a harvest paladin pangolin whose name was Garland. Nice. That works very well. I love that. Yeah, there there you go, Sam. There's the big boy. Mm. Ooh, I love it. (laughs) Yeah, no, Elyon is such a good book. Look at the horns. It's so cool. Uh, it fi- it quote unquote fixes ranger. Interesting. By m- making it a subclass of cleric and giving them hunter's mark as a feature. I see. I mean, everybody and their mother wants to fix the ranger. Cause it looks and sounds so cool, but it just mechanically doesn't work. It, it's weird because, like, uh, I love rangers, especially after getting like really deep into the Rangers Apprentice series. mm Hmm. That's how I feel when I got really into the, uh, what are they called? What was that book series? Oh my God, I'm drawing a blank. <laughs> well, if you forgot it, it probably wasn't yeah. that great. Hey, don't don't <laughs> look at me. I can't read. Series. I'm sorry. I listened to them on audiobook because I also can't read. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I'll be the first to admit the it. My first, D&D, <laughs> my first D&D character, Alf Ranger. Nice. Oh, I'm dude. not afraid to be basic about it. But uh, I mean, first Skyrim character, yeah, they're was good. A... you know, it, it's a classic for a reason. Yeah, I mean, me. my biggest gripe with the Ranger, if you don't mind me getting a little bit PG 13, I go for it. Okay. It's powered by racism. I mean, it is pick a type of person <laughs> you don't like that you hurt that one more. 
Yep, yeah, that, that's true. And, and you know what? We're okay with that. Uh. <laughs> Racism makes the world go round. It's okay. We need conflict in our games. Like, if it wasn't for racism, my brother wouldn't have had a complete free- freak out about uh, these villagers not liking kobolds and threatened to genocide a whole town. I'm with him. I love kobolds, you love do, you goblinoids. Love... <laughs> you can see my Discord profile picture is a bugbear. I, I I saw that. It's, it looks really cool, like an artificer bugbear. Craftsman. <laughs> That's a segue, and I'm into it. <laughs> I think it is a pretty good segue into our first bit of news. Oh, yes. If the news is racism, old news. <laughs> old news, I'm sorry. The Planet of the Apes. Well, yeah, it is racist. All right. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> yeah, it's the hum- anti-human race. No. Oh, all right. now I get what you're saying. Wow, yeah, I'm slow. Yeah. Officially, Big brain. RPG is announced. <laughs> Did you think? Oh, what do you know that one? Yeah, <laughs> I'm more scared. What you thought? <laughs> Apocalyptic world of Planet of the Apes uh, as an ape. I think this sounds really fun. It's kind of the same idea as what you're talking about as like an improvised fighter, right? Like, <laughs> I mean, some of these apes are pretty fucking smart. Have you seen Planet of the Apes? They got like scientists. Yeah, I mean, of course, the, the scientists in the first movie were like, holy shit, flying technology works. And literally, this uh, astronaut just folds a paper airplane and throws it. <laughs> They're like, that's not possible. I mean, you know, they're figuring it out. <laughs> no, it takes time for monkeys to get into aeronautics. Exactly. Ape together strong. Ape together strong. Ape together strong. Uh, I mean, will I be crucified if I say I'm not huge on Planet of the Apes? Yeah, I'm not huge on it. It's cool. Like, you know, I think it's the neat. First I just, I think I've seen like a couple of the new movies and like uh, the first of the old movies and like really nothing else. It's, with with every movie series, I feel like they drag it on too long. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, I always assumed the popularity was out there because it's like it, it's the it's the monkey version of Star Wars or like uh, the the monkey version of Lord of the Rings. You know what I mean? Like, uh, there, mm-hmm. there's a there's like a little section uh, of of, the, of a fan base for all that stuff. It's kind of like how like a uh, Harry Potter is like Star Wars for women. I mean, yeah, there's a lot to unpack there. <laughs> <laughs> like, just dude, guys like Star Wars, and like women love Harry Potter. That is true. Like, I used to like Harry Potter till I became aware socially. Well, one socially conscious, and two, just aware of how. Much you have to just accept. Yeah. Mm. Oh, these are wizards. At no point do they have basic elemental magic. No magic missile. None of it. Yeah. Nope. Like no I, summoning. I can't like Harry Potter because like everyone praises J.K. Rowling for her world building, but that world building has a whole lot of fucking holes. <laughs> yeah, my guy, you just had England in the forties. Why why have wizards still riding with feathers? I'm just waiting for an American exchange student to show up to Hogwarts with a gun. And then they're just like, yo, (laughs) what the fuck is this? Well, you see, in each revolver chamber, I have an infinite capacity of uh, these uh, certain kind of rounds of uh, bullets that have enchantments on them. So while I'm waving my uh, my wand around one hand, I got my six shooter on the other. The (laughs) blicky. Block the parry this, you filthy casual. Voldemort doesn't stand a chance. I love because they say so they have American Wizarding School. It exists. Yeah, and I love the idea of because no one at, at Hogwarts can lift, so the American Exchange students the physically strongest. Just buff as shit. <laughs> no one works out over there because their sport involves sitting and leaning. <laughs> We're gonna piss off the Harry Potter community. I'm okay with that. I'm also okay yeah, with that. Honestly, very it's much over. So. Let it die. <laughs> I don't know. Like the. 
<laughs> uh, dude, people got so worked up with Harry Potter stuff over the past year. Like uh, when Hogwarts Legacy game? came out, oh, like God. I'm just like, hey, cool. A, a game. This is what I wanted in a Harry Potter game. I want to be able to you run around so more. About that for a whole like two weeks. What's there to be mad about? Shit. Like, uh, I, exactly. <laughs> yeah, like people were just they. What gets me is like whenever something comes out, people get on their high horse and then they don't shut the fuck up for mm. weeks on end. <laughs> and it's just like, dude, I'm just trying to live my life. Like shut up. People just like. Forget. Yeah, it's like who really cared, bro? Yeah, you ever... my first question is, can I bully people in my game? Can I be a <laughs> and, and the answer to that question is no, and that is wrong as far as game. Yeah, like what? What you mean? I can't be a Slytherin and that and bully people? What the fuck? I want to be a Hufflepuff who bullies people. Yeah, Give me no one ever suspects the Hufflepuff style. Uh, fucking Hogwarts <laughs> game, sure. I want, you know, if I were to play a game like that, I would want it to be more focused on, like, the magical beasts and the creatures. Oh, my God. That, that's, like... That's where I, my, my yeah, interest same. lies in that world. Like, like you have the Fantastic yeah. Beast movies, and, mm. okay, the first one's all about magical elves. That's awesome. The next yeah. two are about Dumbledore's boyfriend. Yeah, like, I literally don't give a shit about Dumbledore. Yeah, it's just, like... No, I, I really I don't care about cool his gay creatures. backstory. You know what I mean? Like, don't get me... I just, yeah. I mean, like we all make some bad choices when we're young, you know. We all make uh, mistakes and like hate a passion, Jimbo. But you know, like, uh, yeah. I mean, I mean, you know what? Maybe we're thinking about things all wrong. Think about how much you could have changed history if, like, everyone talks about wanting to go back in time and kill Hitler. But has anyone ever thought about? Laid? Yeah. What if? You just got in, went back in time and fucked Hitler. Like, think you could change history entirely. Look, man, all Hitler needed was some pussy. Like, <laughs> <laughs> all Hitler needed was to not get kicked out of school. Yeah, you know, like, uh, w- what if you just convinced him that you know anime and manga was the way of the future? Fuck what Disney, if, and then you just bring Hitler to Japan. You know, like you take your what if, issue. What if Hitler just went else. back in time and found some bitches? Okay, yeah. like <laughs> for all we know, he already has. <laughs> you just like ditched him in a brothel one night with a. <laughs> you saved the world. I mean, you'd still have the problem of the German economy being like, you know, really, really bad. So, oh, yeah. So, like, th- there's a power <laughs> vacuum there. But, you know, it wouldn't be Hitler. It'd just be uh, s- some other guy. How do we end up talking about Hitler on the podcast? I don't, Can we talk about Hitler on the podcast? Uh, I don't know. We, we... <laughs> oh, Happy hey, that, that's good enough for me. But you know what? Back to nerd news. Guys, <laughs> guys, listen up. Uh, Critical Role has done something unthinkable because, like, From nobody asked. And, and they made a whiskey. Mm. Is it good? What, Does what it taste it? like Sam Regal? Oh, I certainly hope so. That's a good question. <laughs> Does it taste like Laura Bailey? Oh, you know what? <laughs> you know, She's a married woman. I don't I'm sorry, fucking uh, uh, care. Uh, Ashley Johnson. That's... <laughs> All of... That one's kosher. Let's go, Travis. I'm sorry. (laughs) You know, Critical Role has no business like uh, hoarding all these beautiful women for themselves or beautiful men. Come on, man. What the hell? They're all yeah. You know, that's not fair. (laughs) They're voice actors. You don't have to see their face. They're acting. Yeah, they don't have to be beautiful. Oh my god! <laughs> uh, you know, we we had a Naruto character on the show uh, a while back. <laughs> we did. Yeah, it's just, uh, yeah, the, the uh, uh, oh Orion gosh. Akaba from Critical Role. He played like one oh. one of the obscure Huga, Huga characters. <laughs> I'm not saying that's my favorite character because, like, I didn't remember the name when he mentioned it. I had to look it up. Me either. I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it, it was like one of those uh, like uh, side Hugas <laughs> that no one cared about. Yeah, yeah. Was it her, Hayashi, 
name is Kaiko Hinata, which is why it's one person's name. Uh, but he was only half breed. Ah, yes, the half breed prince. I, I, I like the novels. <laughs> okay, so uh, according yeah, to this, the uh, <laughs> so base bourbon notes of baked apple, brown spice, and shortbread it's, cookie, and okay. a whole blend of whiskey. I do whiskey. love like Jack Daniel's whiskey, so maybe. I, I don't know. Like a baked apple, brown spice, and shortbread with a. That does sound good. I mean, sand cakes hot. Well, this is a pretty good name. Yeah. Right. Sand Kegs High. Dude, a hint of smoke. Critical Role I, I is like teaming up with stuff. fine familiar spirits to launch Sand Kegs oh, Hide. Awesome, a limited dude. edition oh, super premium whiskey based on the fiery beverage from Critical Role's first campaign. The whiskey is created by fine familiar spirits, co founded by actor Matthew Lillard. Oh, let's go. Jaggy's in on it? Let's go. All right, I got to buy this whiskey. Uh, yeah, that, Wait, this is Critical that's Role's Shaggy thing. whiskey? They got the damn shaggy whiskey, bro. Let's it's go. really buried the lead on that one. You know what I like mean? Zoinks. Oh my god! Like zoinks, yeah. Scoop. Yeah, we're not we making me hit a zoink. Oh, there's even like a video on YouTube. Yeah, uh, Sandkicks High, the premier spirit collaboration. It's such a weird thing. All the things to make as a D and D brand. See, look, 10 seconds in, they knew. The crossover event you didn't know you needed. <laughs> There's a whole lot of those out there, and I'm just waiting. I mean, right? Just look at me in studio here. The crossover events that you didn't want. We, we, we got Plank. Yeah, Plank. I still like to think Plank was sentient and Johnny was on to something. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll tell you, th th this guy, he knows how to party in like a... He shows up in places around my house uh, with without explanation. I mean, is it? But is it not like a lot more fun if Plank is an eldritch entity? I hope so, <laughs> dude. Plank is my patron. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, that's that's a great old one right there. <laughs> the great oak one. <laughs> yes, exactly. The great oak one, warlock. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. It. Get to become Captain Melonhead. <laughs> that, that's great that's just great okay so where well, hold on wait real quick before we move off from this where can we get the whiskey Do you know uh i i don't i i'd assume that we'd have to like uh click on a bunch of links <laughs> you can get it over there yeah <laughs> over there uh, you know the critical role probably has a thing for it on their website probably yeah, you know. That, I would hope. You you'd have to. They don't they can't make money otherwise. I mean, they're, they're gonna have it in some stores, right? Well, like I doubt they're gonna contribute to the heat death of retail. <laughs> they might. Well while you look that up, in other news, because it's been a, a crazy time, Roll Twenty is coming to Discord as an activity. About damn time. Yeah, I, honestly, got my reaction to it. Yeah, Im imagine being this late to the party. Oh, okay. I did find it. it. It's a shame that I don't use, uh, that we don't really use uh, Roll20 anymore because, like, yeah. it's just a shit show as far as a platform goes. But, like, it's not bad. And it's very I entry like level it. for uh, people getting into DD. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. That's how I. Play all Real my quick, D &D. for anyone who may be interested. I did find it. It says uh, mm. Sandcake Hide is sold direct to consumer only through the Quest End website, questendwhiskey.com. Huh. And on the exclusive site for SandcakesHide.com, the sale will run for three weeks only. You know, it's kind of funny that Roll20, for so long, it's just like, hey, we have our own integrated kit that you guys can use. And then collectively, everybody who plays on Roll20 is like, I think they need to kill this game. Yeah, yeah. no, I, I'm a big Roll20 supporter, but I will admit, no, that sucked ass. Yeah. yeah, like, everybody I know that's ever used Roll20, they're like, mm, it has built-in stuff, but let's bring Discord instead. And it's just, it's such a slap in the face of Roll20, and it really is, yeah. 
They're like, please use our stuff. Is it worse that they've said they're not going to sunset that feature? You know what? All five of them. I've had professors use Discord. Yeah. Much as this week? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, two of them. <laughs> All 48 hours. Yeah, so if y'all are interested in that and you want to, you know, streamline your process, that could be the way to go. Nice. It certainly consolidates things by putting it all in one place. Definitely. And maybe it'll fix the mobile version of Roll20. You know we don't talk about it. Or maybe... Ah. They should. Yep. Because back when the mobile version came out, if I tried to use it, it cleared all of the uh, actions off my character sheet. No. I had this weird issue with Roll20 where it split my account into two separate... It made no sense. So I'd have access to some of my... And it was purely dependent on to, to uh, what browser I was using to log in. Hmm. It was the weirdest thing. Because your face on Discord looks like you're like a Japanese movie. What, what is that supposed to? Be? It doesn't Nani? doesn't match your your words. Yeah, you don't you don't look like you're done. Well, someone's oh. got to get me some subtitles then. Crazy. Oh God! Up anyway, as, as what people say, I can't necessarily agree. You know, with first the um, <laughs> the oh, I think the Overlord dub is fantastic. I get that. I mean, he's got such a smooth voice, and he reads the audiobooks. Ooh, he does. That's awesome. Yeah, Chris Guerrero is the one reading the audiobooks. Other news, there's still a Minecraft movie happening. <laughs> that is a thing. Starring Jack Black. <laughs> Fuck yeah, Jack Black. Out of everything. all the sentences, that's sure one of them. Jack Black is really moving into the whole voice acting thing. But yeah, I think the physical acting frame's probably just getting harder. With uh, age. You know, like you have to run around and do all these uh, outward. Yeah, like, like Nacho Libre and School of Rock. Those are those were. He was very physical character in those. He's a very physical character in every movie he does. So it's just like, I can agree. You know, like, maybe his knees are getting a little bad. And it's just like he can't be doing power slides in every goddamn movie. So true. He can't be randomly singing the good when times theme to song. The rock? Nah, the rock's too juiced up. Oh my god, man needs to give it a break. <laughs> if he was a better actor, I'd say keep going, but Dwayne Johnson just isn't. Did you see that there, uh, I don't know if it was AI or fake, but uh, there's a God of War poster with him being in the rock. Oh, God, that's worse. And I, um, Jason Momoa's right there. Uh, I'm so tired of Dwayne. I'm sorry. <laughs> Plays the same person in every movie. Uh, is he one of those actors where his contract says he can't lose a fight? Pretty much. Because there are actors where that is in their contract. Mm -hmm. That is dumb. Like, what One of them is Jason Statham. One of them is Jason Statham. He, he doesn't want to look bad. <laughs> That's like it's why, like, it, it's... Yeah, it's Jason yeah, Statham, like, The Rock, and Vin Diesel. I feel like The Rock has to have, like, a whole hero complex. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean... He's why they're making live-action Moana. Yeah. <laughs> That's ridiculous. When he ironically does not have the body type for his own character. Yeah, he does I mean, I'm more mad that he's <laughs> he's cut muscle and not big boy like Maui. Yeah, he's not bulky like Maui. Like, uh, part of what like made Maui was uh, an endearing character is it's just like a, he had just kind of these uh, these down syndrome to kind of like 
you know, he was a hero of the, the like he had these Down syndrome kids yeah. and whatnot and whatnot. Like what? Like Explain. what? Do you, want, do you want to put the shovel down? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, no, no, you like, see him. No, no, like, I, had, <laughs> I had this explained to me by like uh, some mental health professionals, and because they like did a whole like breakdown of it, it was like. Does Matt we have Down syndrome? The di- the lively. Uh, I oh, guess so. Like Snap that, Pat's coming back. Uh, you know what? That that would be interesting. But it's just like uh, he has physical characteristics of it. Moist critical be like. Ooh. And then it's just like uh, he, in his uh, backstory, they're like, oh, they, they threw him away because like uh, he looked different. Look at I me. Mean, yeah. Mm. It, it's it's weird. But like, you know, get your representation where you can, right? Dude, the best representation I got as a diabetic is Scott Malkinson. I was got Malkinson. I got diabetes. See, and, and that, that, that's Park. all we get. Yeah, I mean, new autistic representation in the anime world happened. Excuse I mean, me? you guys already uh, had Rock Lee. What more do you need? <laughs> uh, maybe. Uh, Lyos from, De- Lyos from Delicious and Dungeon. You know what? Yes, oh, I, I pointed that out to my wife yesterday. And I'm just like, dude, that that is fantastic autistic representation there. Because yeah, no, it's Lyos done right and it's not perfect. shoved in your throat. Same with Senshi. I don't know about yeah, Senshi. Yeah, I think he's just like... Very, a very earnest dwarf. Um, the best way I can describe it is it's a cozy cooking show till it's not. Pretty much, it's mm. a cozy show till it's about autism, and then it's like, oh, plot. Yeah, but uh, how do they know what that is? A hundred percent autistic, and it's just like I'm there for it. Well, last episode, one of his fr- quote unquote friends is like all fed up with his behavior, and he. Just says, "How am I supposed to know that if you've never once told me?" And it's just like, dude, that a hundred percent relatable. Cook. Everyone's like, cook. "Yeah, Shiro's kind of a dick here." Let him cook. Let him cook. But it's just like one of those things where, like, Shiro has clearly never been exposed to that, so it's just like, mm-hmm. okay. On one hand, Lyos Lyos can't read a room, and on the other hand, uh. <laughs> Homeboy is just like not used to dealing with people that, with autism, so it's like, yeah, you know what? It, yeah. I get it. You know, yeah. And Lyos has a special interest where if you let him talk about it, he does not stop. Yeah, and honestly, I that's one of the things I love about dealing with uh, having a, an autistic player at a table or an autistic DM. Like, dude, nine times out of ten, if you have a good autistic DM, uh, like a m- one of my first DMs that I ever had was autistic, and like he, I swear to this day, like he is the best DM I have ever played with, because like he'll run everything in his head, and he's just got that focus, and it's just amazing. Uh, I reiterate that I that I prep eight hours a week and I'm prepared <laughs> I for every event. I all have a little bit of autism. You know? I, I wish I, I could and, I get I a little bit more of that, you know, just to, a little bit more. Could, yeah, double well, dip a little bit. I mean, I got, I got diagnosed with it in eighth grade. Fuck yeah, that's I, a superpower, dude. Yeah, that's why yeah, I say I have a superpower, but they, you have my player cat. Her son is very autistic and it's definitely not a superpower for him. Mm-hmm. So I have started to classify it. And I say I have spreadsheet autism. Yeah, I can see that. Spread. You know what? That's a very good way of putting it. Hmm? It's just, oh. Yeah, and if you love hanging out in Google Docs. I speak this. I speak as someone with autism. Uh, yeah. It's a good experience for me, but it's not a good experience for everybody. Yeah. Like, you know, that's really, you could say that about anything, really. Mm. Well, not, well, not being hit by a car, that's bad for everybody. Yeah, my brother got over it. Depends if the owner of the car has a lot of money. <laughs> well, 
for my brother, it, it, the character development took a long time, but you know, he, he, now he's a responsible adult with an apartment and he, he's got a job and he pays taxes. <laughs> Yo, that last bit's the problem, though. Ah, yeah. Well, I've made a point not to tell him where the taxes go. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> or else I fear he might stop immediately. Oh, yeah, boy. dude, if you told everybody exactly where their taxes are going, they'd stop immediately. Everyone should just stop immediately. Honestly. Yeah. <laughs> I mean... That it just really reminds me of that one time in a class when the professor said, "Okay, you're gonna install this monitoring software when you're taking a test." Whole class said no. What did the professor do? Moved on. <laughs> I, I like that. Like I remember, like, a, yeah, you know, the, you're that's not the, failing a whole class without getting fired. Yeah, honestly, it's like, what you're gonna do? You can't, you can't stomp all of us. Mm-hmm. All right, Sam, what do you got for the monster this week before we uh, go uh, far too far off into <laughs> they can't stop us all? <laughs> they can't. Well, speaking of, you know, many boys who are powerful together, why don't we talk about many dragons, right? So I've, I've talked about, you know, the different species of dragons. We talked about, you know, none of the big ones yet. Mm hmm Some of the chromatic or metallic, something like that. But I've been oh. jumping around there, you know, this bit. <laughs> Going back into the, you know, the Eo Draco Orientalis stuff, talking about Oriental dragons here. Oh, we got the long, long slithery boys. Yeah, long slithery boys. Some of them are fat and chunky. <laughs> you know, some of them have legs. Some of them are weird. How many of them grant wishes if I gather seven things? Wait, what you got to do is you have to get their balls and then you have you extort them for a wish so that they can have their balls back. Dear God. <laughs> the glass shatter moment. What have they done with my bottle summer? <laughs> my testicle summer. Give me back my balls. So they were the dragons in the land of a character. So looking at my notes here, that's where they go. My players are in an interesting spot with dragons right now. Oh, yeah? Uh, so I want to run what are called magical contracts. Essentially, uh, under penalty of it, it's self-enforced. Should you break it, all magic is cut off from you and all parties involved that broke it. They can't antagonize dragons in any way. Nice. They, anytime they run into one, they have to try to talk it out first. That's pretty cool. I like mm -hmm. that. I'm oh, getting into the descriptions here. We got lung dragons are based upon oriental, Chinese, and Japanese dragons, as opposed to the western-based true dragons. However, they are still true dragons. And they also appear in corresponding themes, settings such as Carter or Rokugan. Rokugan, I think is how you say it. Lung dragons are spirits that embody and empower aspects of nature rather than being normal physical creatures. Most lung dragons don't have breath weapons, but possess instead a wide variety of spell-like abilities. So you can definitely say they're a lot more magical. Mm. Traditional dragons. Mm. So all lung dragons begin their lives at the Yi Lung, or Yu Lung. This juvenile stage of their life lasted 20 Most lung dragons could survive from consuming minerals alone, although some varieties did enjoy the taste of meat on occasion. So getting into all of their transforming the different stages, there were eight known species of lung dragons. Mm. So you had the Yu Lung, the carp dragon. They were the larval stage for the rest of these lung dragons. And I'll kind of give you a small little description here. The smallest of the lung dragons, the, the Yu Lung only grew up to about 35 feet, 10 meters in length. Their body and tail were similar in appearance to those of a giant carp. They had blue-gray scales with colored markings, and their eyes were yellow and looked like a cat's eye. Their All two right. arms were tipped with sharp claws <clears throat> and a long beard that flowed from beneath their snout. So, you know, big scaled fish with a beard and two arms. <laughs> <laughs> That's a One Piece character. That it sounds a very Lovecraftian. That's just Kaido. Kind of. And getting into the next one here, we have the Chiang Lung, the river dragon. Chien Lungs were physically distinguished by their enormous size, up to 158 feet, 48 meters in length. Their scales were various shades of green or blue with a yellow underside. 
They had long white horns that grew from their heads, and adults had multicolored beards. As they were polymorphs, they were frequently seen in human form only. So they were more of the, what you what you'd expect from Oriental Dragon, the long body, you know. Mm. Yeah, we talked about that earlier because like they kind of do that like little wavy movement, which I, I like to think that they're just kind of like ride in the weave. Yeah, yeah, like riding the air or something like that. Ride the weave. I, I would imagine a lot of them probably fly via like some form of like telekinesis or like magical manipulation or something well, like that. Yeah, I mean, if it goes off act like the traditional Japanese lore of a dragon, they're walking on clouds. Yeah. So next up, we get into the earth dragons, the Li Young, Li Lung. Li Lungs were per- physically distinguished by their normal size, up to 120 feet, 30 meters in length. Unlike most dragons, they lacked scales and instead were covered in a coarse black fur, the texture of metal wire. Only hatlings had scales, usually light green in color. As they grew older, the scales shed and replaced with fur. Usually by the time a Li Lung was a juvenile, the scales were completely gone. A Li Lung had an unusual appearance. Its body and tail resembled that of a lion, yet it had the face similar to a humanoid. Its tail was adorned with colorful feathers similar to a peacock, and the Li Lung was the only lung dragon with wings. And this looked a lot more like a sphinx, for example, or like a griffin with human face. That's interesting. Yeah, very strange. So next we have the Lung Wang, the sea dragon. Lung Wangs are physically distinguished by enormous size, 135 feet, 41 meters in diameter. Lung Wangs were a distant relative of dragon turtles. They had a large shell covered in thick green scales spotted with silver scales. Covering its neck and head were smaller, lighter green scales spotted with golden scales. Its front legs were large flippers, usually 80% of the length of its shell. Each had two extremely sharp talons at the end. A lung wang's head resembled that of a shen lung with long flowing green, or sorry, golden whiskers. Hmm. So, yeah, think like a dragon turtle, but they have whiskers. and I, I do like the whole whisker bit, thing, you know, because like, it's just yeah. interesting. Yeah, I think it's They're a little bit more distinguished. Yeah, yeah. yeah like... So next up we have the pan lung, the coiled dragon. They were up to 151 feet, 46 meters in length. They resembled pan lung in appearance, but were shorter and thicker. As hatchlings, they had dull scales that were either blue, green, orange, or red, sometimes polychromatic. As they aged, a shen lung scales brightened. A shen lung had ridges along its back, a spiked tail, and two horns atop its head. The gold-colored whiskers feature predominantly on their snout. Hmm. I think we go with... Mm-hmm. All right. All right. I got three more here. Oh, damn, there's so have... many of them. Yeah, oh, more. yeah. It's a diverse cast when you go to uh, Oriental Dragons. I guess so. We have the Shen Lung, the spirit dragon. Now, this one is probably more <laughs> reminiscent of what you would expect from uh, yeah. the uh, oh, Dragon Ball. Yeah, it's yeah. Shen Long is his name. Yeah, and he's what? a spirit dragon. Mom, he's hurt. What do you do? Also, to 151 do feet do? or 40 meters. I don't they know. Resemble I don't know. I can't move and I can get where, are, where is she? They're shorter Outside. and thicker. I'm in my car. Things that had dull scales uh, are either blue. It's like in a podcast, Kirsty. Oh, no, I did. Oh, okay, they that. look very similar, except they were thicker and shorter. Are you almost done with it? No. Oh. I mean, yeah, kind of. We have like 30 minutes left. All right. Well, you can continue with that for a moment. I'll be right back. No problem. No problem. So, second before last, we have the TN Lung, the Celestial. So, they were distinguished by their enormous serpentine body, up to 155 feet, 47 meters in length. They were born with dull gold scales but as they grew older the scales changed to a bright radiant yellow the scales gave off a sweet aroma similar to cherry blossoms some tian lungs had light green or orange scales and they had polychromatic beards manes and whiskers the whiskers were long and rose over their heads like horns i feel like we're getting more and more into the uh, traditional 
Yeah, it's going right to what you think of with the long dragons. Yeah, they're kind of uh, transmorphing into this, like... Mm. (laughs) Well, because it's really neat, like, whereas Europeans viewed dragons as a hazard, Mm. uh, they were revered in Japan. Oh, absolutely. And then we have the last one, the largest, the Tung Ming Lung, uh, the Typhoon Dragon. The largest of the Lung Dragons... They were 167 feet, 50.9 meters in length. They had thick scales in various colors. Blue, green, dark red, and violet were the most common. They had small dark eyes and a wispy beard under their massive jaws, which were lined with razor-sharp teeth. And they, you know, basically the... You know, what you would think of when you think of Oriental Dragons. Yeah. The big balls. The oldest, the biggest... The strongest, stuff like that. So, like I said before, unlike most other dragons, they did not have a breath weapon. Instead, they had other powerful magical abilities, which varied among their kind. All lung dragons could detect the thoughts of other creatures. They could turn invisible at will and polymorph into the shape of just about any animal or large creature that they wanted. Lung dragons could also shift to other planes of existence. So they had, like, a natural plane shift. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't want to go too deep into all of them to kind of leave it open for maybe future talk about. But yeah, I think they are cool and they need to be in more settings. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is, uh, mind if I expound on the no, lore? No, absolutely, yeah. yeah uh, so essentially in my setting, five countries all based on ancient civilizations, Edo, Japan, ancient Rome, medieval France, because that's where, where knights came in. Right. Uh, Arabia and Vikings. And the one on Japan is highly tied into the elemental planes mm-hmm. where uh, magic happened, someone tried to summon them, and there were four beasts of each element. Ryu for the wind, a phoenix, a behemoth for the earth, a leviathan for the water. And that's how Genasi happened. It was a common ancestor that was exposed to the elemental energy. Yeah, like, it's an evolution thing. <sighs> uh, sorry about that, I'm back. Things happen. Okay, uh, what I miss? I was just expounding on some lore. Yeah. We get to the final stage of the, uh, you know, the lung dragon with the tongue me lung, the typhoon, being the biggest and the strongest, and kind of their final stage, you know. All right. Yeah. They're so huge. Uh, <laughs> they, uh, it's like you know, dealing with a gator. Just, I talked about their abilities a little bit. Um, all the long dragons could detect the thoughts of other creatures. They could turn invisible. They could polymorph into pretty much whatever they want. And long dragons have the ability to basically plane shift on them. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah. If they can polymorph, then you know what? Maybe there is. If you can, like, uh, kind of reason with one of them, but they're, like, kind of like oh, mind reading. Oh, they're yeah. very reasonable. Their alignments all kind of range. <laughs> 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 maybe you just get one, like, in kind of a contest. If, like, uh, convince them to play a game with you. you. Got a wise Japanese man shows up in town one day. <laughs> yeah, literally, Uncle Iroh could have been a dragon. Uncle Iroh, yeah, he was. I mean, he was the dragon of the one. I, 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 I challenge you to pie one. show, you know. <laughs> Someone's actually working on the rules for that. If you beat me, I give you a draconic blessing. You know what? Uh, yeah. Draconic boons are already a thing, so that's that's yeah. good. And yet, dragon warlock, not a thing. What? Well, yeah, but that, well, yeah, that was works uh, for Fiend, but like, yeah. oh, we did something that was straight up that, but it was a homebrew without being Fiend, and yeah, I, I have always endorsed it because like it's just so cool. No, yeah, it should definitely be a normal thing. Like, Humans are a natural source of magic, and they're, and they're usually the largest. Yeah, I mean, it wouldn't be the strangest warlock I've ever found. Absolutely not. I got uh, I got future self warlock and the GM warlock. <laughs> did mention that. Yeah. 
Yeah, but I think if uh, we don't have anything else, we can move into our homebrew features. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, I think I figured out what's uh, going on with our, our stingers here. Like, you guys aren't hearing them, but I think they are being properly recorded. Oh. That's good. <laughs> All right, you want to go ahead yeah. and start us off with your homebrew? Well, you know, <laughs> it, it's always fun in the generic. Now I'm gonna have to look into why it's not being recorded right now. Figure it out. I, you know, I bet if I look into it, I'll just figure it out. Okay. Man, that's what we need before I record it. <laughs> so I bring to you guys the Origami Familiar, which nice. God, I hope I can fold it into a tiger. I know, right? Well, mainly because I, I love the allegory of the paper tiger in front of a storm. Mm. Like, it can be whatever you want it to be. Like, uh, the initial art is a paper owl, which is... Oh, that got elaborate. The person who uses a little bit of AI for it, but, you know, I'm mm. Oh, wow. That is not what I was expecting. That looks awesome. I was expecting like a little paper crane. <laughs> Damn, nice. You know what this gives me the vibe of? Like, um, what was her name from Naruto with the paper? Conan. Conan, yeah. Yep, her. God, a sad. paper mage would be really cool. Yeah. So with the with this wondrous rare item, she could. Holder can feel the holder can feel the way the paper guides the holder in order to properly use it. Okay, okay so even if you're not good at origami, it help it guides you. Oh, so my familiar will not be a sheet of paper. <laughs> I did my best. It's just unfolded. Guys, my, my familiar is a paper airplane. You, oh, it, it falls two feet. It's oh. a fighter jet. <laughs> That's a that's a stand. Uh, this item is often found in sheets of one D four plus two large, thin, colorful pieces of paper. Okay. Nice. Or, or maybe not. However you want it to be. Over the course of half an hour, the holder can use a sheet to create an intricately folded paper replica of a creature that can be summoned by the find familiar spell okay nice when complete the paper creature animates becoming a familiar as though it was created by the spell and follows all the rules of that spell when you dismiss a familiar created this way the paper unfolds and returns to its flat state bearing no marks or indication of the previous fold the paper mm -hmm. can be used again. Whenever the familiar uh, created with the paper dies, the paper is ruined and becomes unusable. Yeah. I mean, I could definitely see this item having, like, you know, obvious superior weakness to fire. But, you know, for all purposes, being a familiar is good. Yeah. I, yeah, I like it. Bad. Yeah, maybe if it gets hit by, like, a fire spell. Oh, yeah. Item, I, I would say that if I was DMing, that'd be the major weakness. Yeah, you roll like a D four on like a even number it gets destroyed. Like maybe it auto fails checks against gust of wind. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 right. Like, yeah. Your non cast yeah. giving, giving familiars to essentially any player is always like a good thing. I think. Yeah. Yeah. 
Exactly right. Yeah, like that's why in like our One Piece campaign, I opted to give Tonga the ability to create a familiar. Mm. I, I cannot wait till we start ours. Yeah, I've been reading yeah, like the manga since 2018, so I am excited. <laughs> Oh, well, it's, oh, it, One Piece is older than I am. I remember back when you did the ghost for the staircase uh, uh, animation uh, alongside my typical Guardian Woman cartoon lineup. The, the One Piece rap had no business being. Good. I love that song. It, it has no business being good. You know what I mean? No, it does not. But damn, does it hit. It, it shouldn't, but it does. <laughs> uh, I'm literally holding my Mara Mara Nomi in my hand that I keep it at all times. My friend, my friend went to Japan when he was getting his animation degree as a class trip. And I have, he got, brought me an ace figure. Uh, Mar Maranomi and a golden ace and Sabo coins. Oh, that's so cool. Oddly enough, not my favorite character nor my favorite devil group. Well, you know how it goes. But well, I mean, it's impossible to pull off the Doflamingo sunglasses. Yeah. It's like I want It's a it's really hard to be like that flamboyant. <laughs> yeah. And here is my homebrew for tonight. Oh, that's rad. You can get a look at that. Yeah, I sent you the link already, all right. All right, cool. So, I bring Mask of the Yokai, created by Rudox Tavern. Shout out to them. They have a Patreon. They're on socials, it looks like. All right. So we have the rare, wondrous item, Mask, requires attunement. Gives you Shapeshifter's Blessing three times per long rest. You can use your action to gain the effect of the Alter Self spell, no concentration required. You gain the ability of Oni's Malevolence, recharge five and six. When a creature comes within 10 feet of you and starts its turn there, you can use your reaction to force them to make a DC 13 wisdom saving throw, becoming frightened of you until the end of their next turn. Okay, I'm already oh. loving this because it's got major, like, uh, bleach uh, holification vibe. Yeah, that's so, a hollow mask. Right there. Yeah, it's just like, okay, like, just moves your hand down and. I imagine the flavor. Mm -hmm. Just you yeah. go and you go into your resurrection. Ah, oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Next, we have the will of Sukuno Gami. While attuned to the item, you can perform a special ritual to bond with a single non-living object and fuse it with a benevolent, benevolent spirit. You perform the ritual over the course of four hours, during which you have to fully focus on the ritual without interruption. Mm. The bonded item can be any piece of gear or weapon or item. Uh, the item gains the following benefits for as long as it is bonded to you. The bonded item becomes magical and cannot be destroyed by non-magical means. You can use your bonus action to summon the item to your hand or to don it on yourself. Once per short rest, you can cast a clairvoyant spell without requiring any components or spell slots using the bonded item as a target. You can stop being bonded to the item if you lose attunement to the mask, if you bond with a different item, or if you spend more than 24 hours, 24 hours while being further than 10 miles away from your bonded item. You got, you got the mask. You could <laughs> you could don the sword immediately, dude. Mm. That's dope. My sword. Yes. I love it. It's great. So I don't know. I'm looking up clairvoyance because I don't know what it does in this context. Not a great spell. Yeah, like what you can create a s invisible sensor within range in a location familiar to you. I never get far enough into D and D to actually use spells like 
The sensor remains in place a for third the third level spell. Yeah, it's a third level. Oh, spell. is it? Yeah. Oh, I th I thought it was a higher level because like I never see no. people use it. It just it, it's just bad. Okay, when you cast a spell, you choose seeing, seeing or hearing. You can choose, or you can use the maybe chosen was... sense through the sensor as if you were in its space. Okay, maybe I'm as thinking an of a different piece. spell. Oh, I understand. Mm -hmm. You could like be like, "Oh, I'm gonna bond to this coin, leave the coin somewhere, and use it to like spy on stuff." It does have to be worth a hundred gold at least. Yeah, it's uh, so a hundred I mean, gold, gold coins. No, yeah. no material. <laughs> yeah, no. It 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 as long as something values that at a hundred gold, why not? Yeah, so it could have yeah. sentimental value. Uh, creature wow. that can see the sensor, such a creature benefiting from seeing invisibility or true sight, sees a luminous, intangible orb. Interesting. Okay, okay, that does give some interesting options. Kind of, mm. kind of adds to the omnipresence of like the Oni spirit. Yeah, I like that. Shout out to Rudox Tavern. Yeah, I like this. this. It seems like it has a lot of flavor and is fun. Yeah, you can yeah. have the mask look like whatever you want. Oh, I like that. Mm. And I, I just love masks personally. Like, <laughs> oh yeah, no, our bard, because uh, that's my producer has a is big Bleach fan, and so his character she has a mask that's just appeared. Yeah, I, I feel like that'd be a fun way of handling lots of transformations, like masks and stuff. You know. Yeah, uh, yeah. I I found a sort. I think a. I think it's a type of bard class that you would love. Then it's the masks bard. Ooh. <coughs> yeah, please do. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, so I'm just sending you the link to buy the whole book, but huh, shocker of all the Spire Secrets, my favorite book. Oh, yeah. Uh, do you like cantrips? Do you think higher level spells are just random bookkeeping? <laughs> do you just want to go pew pew my fire explode? Nice. Ah. Fair enough. Uh, where you can either be bit. Wow. Shit. Interesting. You know, I'm I'm looking at this, and this looks really fucking. Oh cool. yeah, the art oh, fantastic. New classes, new races, 150 subclasses. Yes. Damn. Nice. Witch, war mage. Cool. Martin. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, that's kind of cool, though. Uh, at level two, it can. Ah, uh, it, it it is awesome. She's dead, Jim. Ah, we got him back. Connected. Weird. What happened? Oh, did I disconnect? No, no, it wasn't you. I, no. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, that Valdas is a book. It has been my go-to for anything. I really like this. I would definitely play these classes. 
please do. Oh boy. Look, we have a, we have many Google Drives and Docs that have many books. <laughs> oh. Awesome. Oh man, thank you so much, man. We'll add that to our compendium. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> no one will take Candy Blast. I know a guy who would. I, two guys. Bludgeoning would, damage. Can, bludgeoning damage cantrip. Ancestral weapon. Ooh. I love that. I love that. Yeah, <laughs> she's very shameless. <laughs> I respect the hell out of it. Mm. Hey, I mean, I bought it, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, that's what. No, I love. It. <laughs> mm. Fair enough. <laughs> Dead ass. I we are gonna do a small special called Home Sweet Homebrew. Crossover. Where the one rule is you have to play a class who is off ball class who's never played before. So why don't you just pick some of your friends? He's dead, Jim. Oh my god, he's dead. I guess you're in charge. Alright, this is my show now. Connected <laughs> there. What the Comes fuck? Comes right back. <laughs> okay, what what did I miss? Uh, we put him in charge, and I asked his first decree, and you came back immediately. My first decree <laughs> is Orion must come back. <laughs> okay. Okay. I like that. Yeah. And it'll take place. I'm not running it, but it'll take place in mm -hmm. my setting. Because when other people run games in my setting, that makes me feel really bad. That sounds awesome. I would love to like run one of your games there. I think that's probably a good time to close out my night. Yeah. Twitch.tv, uh, choose underscore your underscore roll, R O L L. Nice. Uh, you can just search choose your role, all one word, on YouTube and on Instagram. Mm. The Instagram is exclusively pictures of my puppy. <laughs> and, we're, and we stream every Saturday at 6 30 p.m. Eastern and every other Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern. Though last we had last time we had to stop because our uh, the DM's internet just killed itself. No, oh, it, 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 it does it. happen. I, I've had it happen to. It's very fun, and um, we've actually had one of our players here as a guest, Casey. Ah, yes. Yeah, they are the light side user to my dark side. Nice. Where I am slowly corrupting them. <laughs> yeah, I can be found there, and uh, you can, if you're interested in my ramblings, pause the parade on Twitter, where right. I've taken to just uh, throwing out random monsters I create. I love saying, it. Saying, hey, do whatever you yeah. want with them. Yeah, it, it's been great talking to you on Twitter and interacting with you. Yeah, thanks, guys. Yeah. Night. Now you have me on Discord if you ever want to talk to Digimon, and if you ever want to have me on here again, I'd be more than happy to. If I get one fan mission accomplished. <laughs> I know, bad, being on a podcast was already a professional goal I wanted to meet. I know, right? It feels, it feels good.
Yes. Why? <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing right? What are we Riddle doing me this. Wrong? Why? Do you hate us? Do you love us? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Hit us I, with that I, number one more time, Orion. All right. 100. Yeah. Yeah. If you like it, if you don't like it, you might just play it on the show. You might absolutely. Maybe if there's no music or all the thought in the background. You, know? you make it sound like that's a major problem. <laughs> People it do that, man. Be. <laughs> we don't want it to be. That's the He's tackling it before it happens. Yeah, better. <laughs> Better be uppity about it now and discourage it from ever happening. I mean, count this as a voicemail. Talk about Warhammer. Uh, I mean, I love those guys. The bad, especially the bad moons. Oh, yeah, the whole custodies thing. Uh, calm the hell down. <laughs> there are statues in golden armor. Who cares? So, I mean, one, I am, I'm pro fem custodies, mainly because I don't think it hurts anybody and inclusion's fine. But you also mm -hmm. have Sisters of Silence, Sisters of Battle. There's a whole order of the Assassinorum that can shapeshift, and they're female only. Yeah, like men, men did not take of, well to the shapeshifting chemicals. <laughs> well, I, the biggest thing I don't understand are people getting mad about lore changes. Meanwhile, uh, no one ever complains that the Emperor was just on the throne because he was old before they wrote the heresy. That's a massive lore change. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. It's just like, no, I was so invested in this, and now you've invalidated my opinion. Yeah, that, well, especially, one thing, I, reason I don't play Warhammer is one army costs a car payment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honestly, like, my dad's getting into Warhammer, and it's just. Damn. You're right, you're right. So if you just talk about Warhammer, get me on here. I can talk about Warhammer. That's that's another show for another time, another podcast entirely. But if y'all have been interested and enjoyed what you do here, just uh just check out the Patreon, the Discord, the Twitter, leave us a voicemail. And you know what? We'll see you next time. Messages, anything. Enjoy the beautiful day. Enjoy your weekend. We're Dungeons and Talk Shows. We're Dungeons and Talk Shows. <laughs> I need an outro. <laughs> and choose your role carefully. Ah, see, that, that that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs>